Hello. This is the second of a two-part session on using PowerTeacher Gradebook. Uh, just kind of some introductory things of how to use it. In the last session, I talked about setting up your Gradebook, uh, doing some of the basic information to get it set up uh, to be ready to use. In this session, we're going to talk about adding assignments and entering grades. So, uh, once again, after you uh, log in and you open your gradebook, uh, as we did last time, uh, then you will see a screen like this. So we have, in this case, my Old Testament class. Again, be sure that you're working in up here, that you're working in the right term. Also, it's helpful, another thing to notice here is this reporting term. This shows you what grades are actually going to show up down here. Right now it says S1, which means it's going to show me all of the grades for the whole first semester, first quarter and second quarter. I usually like to just view the quarter at a time because that's then going to show me here what the grade is for the quarter as it averages it up automatically. So uh, you might want to set it that way. Sometimes you set it for the semester just so you can see, okay, how are they doing for the semester? Uh, but uh, viewing it by quarter tends to be most helpful. So the first thing you need to do is you need to add an assignment. So up here you have the menu bar for assignments. So we'll click there and again note, be sure that you're in the right class here and the right reporting term and click the plus sign. Okay, and that brings up this screen down here. Here's where you enter a name for the assignment. So I might call my first one is going to be Homework uh, Chapter 1. Now you need to give it an abbreviation. It needs to be fairly short, so I might call this something like Homework 1. Okay, now the category. These, remember, you defined the categories earlier for your different grades. So, what category is this? Well, this is a homework grade. And now you notice it says, okay, normally I enter my scores as a percentage. That is, I figure them out on a scale of 100. If I wanted to change that, if I said, well, no, I want to make this on points, and it's going to be a 10-point homework assignment, and I'm going to give them anywhere from 0 to 10, you can enter it here. Uh, you can make that points. Uh, so we'll say percentage. There's a possible 100 points. They're not. You can't get extra credit on this, so I'll leave that at 0. Weight here. Uh, sometimes you might do something where you might say I want this to count as two homework grades or as two test grades or something like that. You want it to count double or half. So you can enter a weight here. So if I wanted this to count double all the other homework grades, I could enter two here and then it would automatically count twice in the averaging. Uh, so that's what the weight is for. Date due. Uh, be sure that it's a date that's actually in the quarter. So notice the dates. If you enter a date, like if I'm working here in first quarter, but I enter a date that is in the second quarter, the assignment's just going to disappear. So you want it to be in the quarter. It's going to default to the next date that is actually in the quarter. Uh, but let's say this first one I'm going to have due on the 17th. So I enter that, and I do want this as part of their final grade. It is going to be graded. Uh, if this was just a reading assignment, I could uncheck this, and then it would not count. It would just show up. Uh, here's where I can enter a description of the assignment, and this is really helpful. You need to do this unless it's just very obvious from the name uh, what the assignment is. So I might say something like, uh, the odd questions on page 45. Uh, and then if I want to do something like this, be sure and use complete sentences. Okay, this will show, this is how when they go into Power Teacher, when they go into the grade book, uh, they can click on it and they will pull up this description and it will show them what the assignment is. 
So be sure you have something there so when they look at it, they and their parents, that's important for their parents also to know, okay, here's what your assignment is for the night. Now this other tab here for publish, you can publish it immediately. That means as soon as you click save down here, uh, when the students look in their grade book, they'll see this assignment. They'll know it's coming up. As I mentioned last time, if you have things like pop quizzes uh, or things that you're not really crazy about them knowing about much ahead of time, you can uh, publish it uh, on the due date or on a specific date, like maybe you want it okay, not to show up until a week before. You could say, I don't want this assignment. I want to show up a week before it's due. So you can do that. Um, be, don't wait on those assignments unless they're things like pop quizzes that you don't want them to know about at all ahead of time. And the reason is that uh, they do want to, and their parents especially, want to be able to look ahead and to see what's coming up. And so if you have a lot of assignments coming up but you don't allow them to see them, it doesn't do the parents any good. Uh, so I would encourage you to go ahead and publish the assignments immediately or at least publish them enough in advance that they can plan ahead. And you can publish scores if for some reason you don't want, like maybe you give a test and you know all the kids really did rotten on this test and I'm not even going to count it. You can just not even publish the scores and they wouldn't see the score, they would just see the assignment. Uh, that would be rare, but you uh, could uncheck that. So anyway, after you've entered all the information in, then you click Save. Be sure you do that. Okay, and then it'll work for a little while. And then it will show up up here. Okay, so then you can go through and add more assignments. Uh, you don't need to add them all immediately, but uh, you add more assignments. Okay, so that's how you add assignments to a class. Now, another thing too, another tool here is, okay, I've got two sections of Old Testament and the assignments are going to be the same for both sections. So after I've entered assignments, I can go up here to Tools, Copy Assignments. And I want to copy that one that I just now did. I copy that, check that, click Next. Now, which classes do I want it to go to? Well, I want it to go to my fourth period Old Testament class. Due date. Existing means it's going to be the same due date that's in the other class. So like if you have multiple assignments that you're copying all at once, it will reproduce the same due dates uh, across the board. But you might say, well, you know, that other class, they're a week behind or something like that. So you could change uh, the due date. Uh, for when you copy it. Most of the time you'll just use existing because generally your classes are going to be on the same schedule. So um, again, be sure that you have here, you know which quarter you're copying it to. And then you copy it and you'll notice when I go over here to my fourth period class, there's the same assignment. Okay. Now if I want to edit that assignment, let's say I've given it and I, you know, I want to change something Notice up here you have this little arrow. This is your great book view and that little arrow. When you click on that, it brings up the same screen that you used to uh, add the assignment. So here you can change things as you need to. Click on the X here and that gets rid of that screen. Okay, so you've entered, you've added a new assignment. Now to enter grades, just click on the box and enter the grade. And in this case, remember, I defined it as a percentage, so it shows up as a percentage. Okay. Now, you enter a few grades. A couple of things to mention here. Okay. Now, you'll notice there's nothing showing up here in final grade. That's because, if you remember, when I set up this class, I set it up to drop the lowest homework grade. Right now there's only one homework grade, so it's dropping that one homework grade, so there is no final grade showing up yet. If I had two homework grades, then 
it would be dropping one of them and it would show the other one over here. So that's why there's nothing happening there. If I had this set up to where I weren't dropping any low grades, then the grade would show up here. This would be what their quarter average is. Okay. Now, I've got this one student here that has a grade less than 70. Okay. And our school policy is whenever there's a grade less than 70, you need to enter a comment to tell the student and the parents why the grade is low. So in this case, you click on the grade. If you right click, it brings up this contextual memo. And you could say, maybe it's just that it was turned in late. Okay, so you can just do that. And notice it has a little indicator here for late. That'll at least tell them, okay, that's why the grade is low. Uh, or if you don't want to do that, you have a place here, you can say it's missing. Or you can show Score Inspector. Show Score Inspector brings up this screen where you can then type in a comment. Like maybe in this case, I could say something like uh, Carter didn't understand the difference between Moses and David, and he thought uh, Moses killed Goliath. Okay. The point is on your comments, remember, parents and students are going to see these, so don't get sarcastic here and make these helpful comments so that they know what they did wrong and also what they need to do uh, to fix it if it's not real obvious. Uh, you know, don't say things like um, Carter wasn't trying or you know, Carter didn't spend any time on this and uh, there are other times that we'll talk about appropriate comments, but make appropriate things here and don't just say, you know, Carter has the intelligence of a mustard seed or something like that, but hopefully it will grow sometime in the future. Uh, don't say things like that. Again, parents will get very upset and you'll get calls and I'll get calls and I don't want that. So just stick to facts here, but remember you have to put some type of comment anytime there's a grade less than 70. So after you type that in, click close and there's a little indicator here to show that there's a comment. Now, sometimes, especially on homework assignments, it might be that all the students get the same grade. And I mean, you could just go down through here and enter hundreds or something like that. But there's also another feature here to fill the scores. Again, if you right click on the box, it brings up the contextual memo menu and you can fill scores. So in this way, you can fill the whole column. Let's say that I want to give everybody a hundred. Okay. Notice here this says, which scores am I going to fill? Items with no score. Maybe two students didn't get a hundred. So I've gone through and I've marked those and I want everybody else to get a hundred. This will, whatever's blank, it's going to put a hundred in it. Or I could replace all of the scores. No matter what I've entered, I'm going to just make them all 100 or whatever grade I want. Or it could be I've had this happen where I've had a quiz that I've given or a test where all the students basically missed the same thing or they all had the same problem. And I want to put the same comment for all of them. So I can click here and say, OK, give everybody the same comment. So anyway, I, in this case, I just want to fill my blank scores with 100. Uh, and so I've checked there. I've entered the grade I want to enter and I'm, it's going to be the items that have no score. So when I click OK, you notice now I have a hundred in all the grades that were blank. So that's just a little quickie thing you can do. Now let's say that a student is absent or for some reason doesn't turn in an assignment or for any, any reason basically that they haven't done the assignment yet. Uh, in this case, let's say that Becca was absent and so she doesn't turn in the homework. What I strongly encourage you to do, this isn't school policy, but it sure makes things easy for everybody. I'm going to give her a zero for that assignment, even though she was absent and even though it was an authorized absence. She hasn't turned it in yet. I'm going to give her a zero. And for the comment, you notice here on this tab, comment, here are some comments that you can automatically fill in okay, without typing them. And in this case, there's one down here called not turned in or completed due to absence. So I just double click on that.
click close and then she and her parents they'll say well why have you got a zero there and it will say well I've got a zero because I wasn't here that day so that encourages her and her parents to be sure and turn in the assignment uh, if you give them if you just leave it blank uh, you can do that and it won't factor into the grade at all or if you put an exempt or something like that it that, that also works if they're absent but I found that if you put a zero in, because it's going to impact this grade here, it gives them a little bit more incentive to be sure that they get it fixed. So that's just a strong suggestion, but several teachers have found that that's really helpful in getting assignments or tests, especially if a test has a zero, it reminds me I've got to make up that test. So that's helpful. Now, the only other thing after you've entered the grades, You'll notice these are grayed right here. That means that you've changed something, okay? And so you need to save it. Uh, okay. Now, the only other thing to say about grades, be sure you enter the grades as soon as possible after the assignment. Uh, parents and students want to know how they're doing, and if you wait a lengthy time, it doesn't help them to know how things are going. It doesn't help them to know if they need to address something. Uh, so enter the grades just as soon as you can. Uh, if you can do it that day, do it that day. Okay. Uh, if it takes you a little bit longer to grade a paper, uh, I realize that, but uh, don't delay on grading and don't delay on entering the information in the grade book because, again, the parents and students want to know how they're doing. So I hope this is helpful. If you have any other questions about using the grade book, uh, be sure and see me or see one of the other teachers, and we'll be glad to help you out.